Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Today I want to look at a Vermeer and I actually have this one in my new user's guide. I just created one the other day. It's only 95 pages, folks. Check it out. I eliminated dynamic symmetry from my user's guide and I simply talk about the harmonic armature, which I think is the best system out there when it comes to the two. I think the harmonic armature is much easier to use and build upon than dynamic symmetry. But if you have an interest in dynamic symmetry, you can always read Mikhail Jacobs' book. You can find it on my website, and I have a ton of videos on that book if you want to go down that road. But anyway, I want to analyze a Vermeer. Let me say this. This is a incredibly complex design. And the thing about the harmonic armature is that you can make a design as simple or complex as you want. This is an example of something that's really complex. And Charles Boulot analyzes some of Vermeer's work in the book, The Painter's Secret Geometry. And you can get an idea of how complex his work really is. But I'm not going to show every single division, but I'll show quite a few. And this is going to take me a while, so let's get started. I'm not doing this analyzation to scare anybody away. I just want to do a few videos and show how some of these analyzations are taking place. Like I said, I have this in my user's guide. But it's good to understand of how complex some of these master artists work is so that you can have a new appreciation for them. And of course, you're not going to be at this level, like I said in some of my other video lectures, that if you're just starting out in this, you're starting out at the beginning, the harmonic armature. It's the beginning of all great designs, and that is twinkle, twinkle, little star. As you get better at it, you will, your compositions will improve. Like anything, if you're learning how to play the piano, it's the same thing. You're not going to start out with a piece by Beethoven or Mozart. That would be stupid. So you got to start out simple. But let me continue on. When I drop this vertical line, I'm getting a division right here. It, it's faint, but you can see it. So I figured I'd point that out right away. And like I said, this is such a complex design. It's mind-boggling, but it gives you an idea of why Vermeer is such a master at his work. And I don't know how long this is going to take, but it will take a little bit longer than doing some of the other ones that I have done in the past. If you want to learn this information and start analyzing work, I recommend Thomas Kegler. His work is great to use to analyze and just pick a few of his paintings and drop down the harmonic armature and see what divisions you can find. Look for dominant lines, your vertical, horizontal, and diagonal line. Look for those look for those dominant lines and then you can start plucking away at, you know, how he's designing his work. If you if you've just joined my website for the first time, I don't use dynamic symmetry to analyze work. I find the harmonic armature much more reliable and accurate when it comes to this information. Unless you find a painting that's specifically designed in a root rectangle, then you can use dynamic symmetry, but even then you can use a harmonic armature. So anyway, all right, so I have the 14 line grid drawn out. Let me just start plotting a few of these lines. You have a horizontal line right here in the picture frame right there. Then you have another one right here that goes alongside straight up that picture frame as well. You have a vertical right here in the doorway with those intersecting diagonal lines right there and I'll bring that all the way up. You have another one right here and I'll bring this one all the way down with these intersecting diagonal lines right here. You have a horizontal division right here with that intersecting diagonal line. You have another one right here, in this area right here, with that line. I can then drop a horizontal line right here where this vertical meets a diagonal line. It gives me the bottom of that area. I have another vertical right here with these intersecting diagonal lines right there. It gives me this vertical running down and I'll bring that to about right here. 
You have a horizontal line right here that is derived from these intersecting diagonal lines right there. And I'll bring this all the way over because when I bring that all the way over, I can start dropping a few more lines. If I bring this horizontal line right here over, I can then drop a vertical right here where this horizontal meets that diagonal line right there. It gives me that division. I'll just bring this to here for now. I can drop a horizontal line right here where this vertical meets that diagonal line right there. It gives me the top of that frame right in there. And if I bring this all the way over to the right hand side and then have another division right here. It's faint but you can see it in the painting. It's right there. I have another horizontal line right here where this vertical meets that diagonal line and it's giving me this division right there. And I'll bring this to right here. So with those lines dropped you can get a really good idea of what's going on here. And there is a few more. And let me try to point those out. If I drop another horizontal line, oops, try that again. Just trying to draw this out. I bring this up to right here where this vertical meets this diagonal line. I can drop a horizontal line and when I do that, I now have another division running along this edge right here, right there, for that division. This is complex, there's no doubt about it. But also notice here that the diagonal, the angle that this woman's leaning is following on this diagonal line here. Normally I highlight all this stuff in blue, but I don't even have to because I can drop another vertical right here that gives me the the arm in the chair, right? And then I can just bring this up. I'll just bring it up to right here because it lines up with that chair. And you can find more. But for example, you have another division right here where this horizontal meets that diagonal line and encloses that area, this horizontal, or this vertical there. So that's all I'm going to do, but that's a lot. That's enough. And it's pretty intense, but you can see how. Vermeer is getting many of these divisions in this highly complex painting. I hope this wasn't too much for you guys today, but something I've been wanting to do for a while. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it, as always.